let me show you a really cool animated Polaroid timeline in PowerPoint. And along the way, I'll tell you some history about how I got started with my channel. So the trick here is very easy and maybe you already know it, but I find that people don't take enough advantage of it. So hopefully you will. Basically, it involves connecting slides together through transitions so that you can scroll through an unlimited number of slides. This can work for the Polaroid timeline or any timeline, for instance, or you can use it for things like organizational charts, website demos, or for things like graphics or data sheets that don't quite fit on one slide. Super easy, but very few people do it. So if you do, you'll definitely stand out. Now, the easiest way to do this is if you have version 2010 or above. If you have an earlier version, you can still get the same or a similar effect, though you're a little bit more limited. And I'll explain both methods, starting with 2010 and later. For this, you just take two slides between which you want to transition, then go to Transitions and select Pan, and just change the direction to what you want. The good thing is that you can go forward and back if you ever need to see the previous slide again, and it still works. And the key here is that you can't just have this picture be on the slide itself, but you need to have it as part of your slide master. So for this example, I put this cloud graphic into the master by going to view master and putting it in at the top. And again, it does not work the same if this is just a picture that you put on the slide and send it back. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, it will look like this, which is pretty bad. <laughs> you need to use a slide master. The other thing I want to note is that if you are moving stuff right to left or across the slide, try to choose a background that doesn't have stuff on the left or right. So for example, a template like this isn't great for that since the stuff uh, runs into that design on the left. But you could use this for a vertical scroll instead. And one other thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you're perfectly aligning everything that will be connected across slides. As an example, here's some stuff that I was just working on for work recently. I made the text generic so that our top secret process stays top secret. <laughs> but here, I've matched up this line perfectly with this line so that when you scroll, it's a seamless transition. So there you go, that's the pan transition. The other cool thing to play with if you have uh, PowerPoint 2010 and above is the other dynamic transitions. So for example, if I just take out the lines here and put a box around this graphic and make sure the box is the same on both slides, I can use this rotate transition to sort of make it look like a rotating cube. Definitely not perfect, but if your content lends itself well to a cube, this could be really cool, actually. It's almost like another type of animation. Don't just use it just to use it, though. <laughs> if it Only use it if it fits your content, because it can get really cheesy really fast. <laughs> and by the way, I also use the orbit transition here to make the rope exit in the video earlier. So again, it's it can be kind of like a cool additional exit animation, too, that your audience might not be used to. So definitely play around with these. Okay, well that's pretty much it for the later version. So now let's talk about how to do this in earlier versions. And basically for this, it's sort of similar, but you use the push transition. And you're really just essentially pushing one of the slides by the other, as you can see in this presentation here. And for the background, you're a little bit more limited. You can either use a solid color, like what I just showed, or if you're using a picture or other kind of design, you have to make sure it fits together on both sides that you're scrolling through. So this background doesn't, for example, since I have the sun here and the cloud gets cut off at the side and it would look really bad if I tried. <laughs> However, this picture is much better because the clouds don't touch the sides and the sky is a similar color. So for a picture like this, I like to flip it horizontally uh, for the next slide so that the sides match each other as closely as possible when you scroll so that it looks seamless, just like this. And that is basically it. Again, super easy stuff, but when it makes sense, please use it because I very, very rarely see it done. So much opportunity wasted. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed. And if you want to stick around, I'll tell you a little bit about how I got started with my channel and all of the challenges I faced along the way. 
So as many of you know, for my full-time job, I work at a consulting firm. So for one of my client projects, I decided to get really creative with PowerPoint. So then I thought, hmm, maybe I can do some sort of slide design on the side. So that's where the initial idea for doing something on the side with PowerPoint was born. So at that time, I didn't really know about all of these websites where you can sell your professional services. So what I decided to do was actually try to sell my services on eBay. And then I thought, wow, so many people are going to want to buy this. But actually, no, not one person bought it. <laughs> so then I thought, or maybe I just need to learn more about presentations and slide design before people will want to buy my services. So I did something else as a result. So what I ended up doing is buying pretty much all the presentation books out on the market. I thought, you know, I actually have a unique point of view. I do have something to add to this already really, really rich body of work. So I wrote a book proposal and I sent it to some publishers. Fastest rejection I've ever gotten. <laughs> I was actually pretty impressed with some publishers, how quickly they got back to me with a rejection. I was very impressed that they that quickly could determine that, that my book was no good. <laughs> so it was back to the drawing board. So I was thinking and thinking and thinking, what else could I do? And I thought, hmm, maybe I could try to teach some of this stuff online. So I came up on lynda.com. I didn't know any better. I didn't realize that they take just the world's greatest <laughs> authors and speakers um, who are extremely accomplished. I didn't realize that. So I applied and never heard back, <laughs> which pretty much means I was rejected. Uh, so then I said, okay, maybe I just should give up on this PowerPoint stuff. Maybe I just don't have anything to offer the world, but I wanted to give it one final attempt. Just as an experiment, I put up a video tutorial of one of the tricks that I learned through my consulting work on YouTube. And I basically said in the video, hey guys, if you like this and you want me to do more, let me know. And if you think that this is really stupid and just, you know, I should quit right now, let me know as well. And very fortunately, I had some very nice comments that said, hey, you know, you might have something here. Try to put a few, few more tutorials up and see where it goes. And ever since, thanks to incredible support from viewers around the world, I've been able to grow my channel even more and be, be able to provide even more tips and tricks that people find useful. And I'm hoping that this is just the beginning of the journey for me, that with more time, I can continue to build out my tips and tricks, continue to build out my website, and continue to bring even more value to people around the world so that they can make their PowerPoints and their presentations in general a lot more interesting and engaging. So thank you to everyone who's been supportive over the years.